Hello, and welcome to Soothing Pods Sleep Stories. My name is Chris, and tonight I will be your companion on a journey through the enchanting and timeless realm of Greek mythology. Our tale follows the swift and cunning Hermes, messenger of the gods. Allow the adventures of Hermes and the celestial drama of gods and nymphs to carry you into a tranquil world, easing you into a restful slumber amidst their tales. Before we begin our tale, let's take time to relax and let go of the stresses of the day. Close your eyes and breathe deeply. With your next exhale, begin to imagine yourself as a feather, a unique and delicate creation, high above the earth, cradled by the gentle hands of the breeze. You are floating descending from the heavens with grace and ease. The world below you unfolds like a patchwork quilt of greens and browns, blues and greys, vast and sprawling canvas of life and motion. As you drift downwards, Carried on the soft breath of the wind, notice the peace that envelops you. The air is cooler here, filled with the fresh scents of the earth that rise to greet you. Sunlight dances through your fibers, filling you with a warm glow, highlighting the intricate patterns that make you unique. Below, the landscape is a marvel. Mountains stand tall, their peaks touching the sky. Rivers carve paths through the land, shimmering like ribbons in the sunlight. Forests stretch out, an endless sea of green and you, a single feather, float above it all. Your journey is a gentle one, a serene glide towards the earth that feels like a slow return to a place you once knew. The wind, your constant companion, whispers secrets ancient tales that are carried across time and space, meant only for you. And then, as gently as a sigh, you touch down, the earth soft beneath you. Before you can wonder at the journey's end, a figure appears. Hermes, the messenger of the gods, with wings at his heels, and a smile that speaks of mysteries and adventures untold. With a tender gesture, picks you up, and in that moment, you realize your journey is not at an end, but a beginning. You are to become a part of his magical shoes. Wings that carry messages between gods and the mortals. A bridge between worlds. It is here, with Hermes, that our story begins. In the hushed twilight that cloaked Mount Olympus, 
the mighty ruler of the gods summoned Hermes to his chamber. Hermes, accustomed to the whims and urgent calls of the gods, found himself before Zeus's grand bedchamber. With a gentle knock on the door, Hermes entered. Zeus stood by the window, gazing upon the world below with a pensive air. Ah, Hermes, my trusted messenger. Zeus began, his voice betraying a hint of unease. I find myself in need of your unique talents once again. Hermes, ever observant, noted the uncommon sheepishness in Zeus's demeanor. My lord, said Hermes, his voice steady and calm, how may I serve you this evening? Zeus sighed, turning from the window to face Hermes. The moonlight cast shadows that played across his divine features, revealing a rare vulnerability. I have been indiscreet, he admitted, his gaze dropping to the floor before finding Hermes's eyes. Hera has discovered my entanglements with the nymph, lo, and she is, understandably, furious. Hermes was not surprised by Zeus's confession. The king of gods was known for his amorous adventures. Zeus, you have indeed been a friend to many a lady, Hermes said, his tone light attempting to inject a hint of levity into the tension. Zeus managed a wry smile at Hermes's remark, but quickly became somber again. Yes, and now I fear Hera's wrath might disrupt the harmony of Olympus. Hermes, you have always had a way with words, a soothing balm for even the most tempestuous heart. I ask you to speak with Hera, to calm her storm. Zeus said, his request layered with both hope and desperation. Hermes felt a flicker of reluctance. Mediating between Zeus and Hera was no minor task. Hera's anger was as fierce as her love was strong. Zeus, you ask much of me. Hermes replied cautiously. Hera's anger is not easily quelled, especially when it comes to matters of the heart. I know, I know. Zeus agreed, his voice heavy with regret. But who else can navigate the turbulent waters of Hera's heart with such grace and diplomacy? I entrust this to you, Hermes, not only as my messenger, but as a god of wisdom and cunning. Hermes considered Zeus's plea, understanding the weight of the task, to mend the rift between the king and queen of the gods was a daunting challenge. Yet, Hermes felt a stirring sense of duty. Very well, Zeus, he finally said, his voice resolute. I will speak with Hera. I cannot promise her forgiveness, but I will strive to bring peace to Olympus once more. 
Zeus's expression softened, gratitude shining in his eyes. Thank you, Hermes. Your loyalty and wisdom are treasures to us all. Before venturing into the tempest that awaited Hera, Hermes sought counsel among the other gods. His path first led him to Athena, who advised, Approach Hera not just with words, but with a gesture of reverence. Remember, respect is a currency she values above all. Taking Athena's wisdom to heart, Hermes then sought something that could serve as a fitting tribute. He knew Hera's love for her garden and its myriad of enchanting flowers, and so he chose a rare bloom, one that shimmered with dew and the light of the moon. With the gift secured, Hermes approached Hera's magnificent garden. The place was a testament to her love for beauty and order, filled with flowers of every hue. Peacocks strutted majestically among the flora. Their iridescent tails mirrored the vastness of the night sky a sight to behold. In the heart of this splendor, Hera tended to her beloved birds, a presence as commanding as the peacocks were graceful. Hermes stepped forward into the garden, the rare flower in hand, and cleared his throat gently to announce his presence. Great Hera, queen of the gods, your garden is as breathtaking as the tales say. Hermes began, his voice laced with genuine admiration. I come bearing a gift. Hera turned, her gaze piercing, Yet she couldn't help but notice the singular beauty of the flower Hermes offered. Hermes? She addressed him, her voice cool yet measured. Your words are as smooth as your path through the skies. What brings Zeus's messenger to my sanctuary? Hermes... Knowing discretion was the better part of valor, chose his words carefully. My lady, Zeus recognizes the pain his actions have caused. He wishes for nothing more than to soothe the strife that afflicts your heart. Here is expression hardened at the mention of Zeus her eyes reflecting the storm brewing within. So, Zeus sends his herald to placate me. He errs if he thinks a flower and sweet nothings will erase his betrayals. Hermes bowed slightly, acknowledging her anger. I understand your anger, my queen. My role is but to convey a message of peace. A silence fell between them. The tension palpable. Hera's gaze drifted back to the flower, then to Hermes, a decision forming in her mind. Peace, she mused, is a luxury bought with a prize. If Zeus seeks my favor, he shall have it, but not without consequence. Lo, the nymph who has caught his wandering eye shall be the vessel of my wrath. The declaration hung heavy in the air. 
Hermes, though skilled in the art of negotiation, found himself at a loss. Hera's intent was clear, and her resolve unshakable. She turned back to her peacocks, dismissing him without another word. The throne room of Olympus, usually a beacon of divine authority and power, felt unusually tense on this day. Zeus sat upon his throne, waiting for news about how the conversation between Hera and Hermes transpired. The grand doors opened, and Hera entered, her eyes, pools of depth and wisdom, fixed upon Zeus with a cold finality that made the air around him chill. Zeus, Hera began, her voice resonating with a steely calm. Your pretty little distraction has been dealt with. Zeus met her gaze, though the edge in her tone caused a stir within him. Hera, my queen, he replied, maintaining his composure. What actions have you deemed necessary? Io will no longer be a concern, she stated, her words slicing through the tension. I have transformed her into a cow. I do not bother trying to find her. I've put her under the watchful guard of Argus Panotes. With his hundred eyes, no god nor mortal will be able to approach him without detection. Zeus, for all his power, felt a shiver sneak down his spine. The finality in Hera's voice, the cold detachment with which she sealed Lo's fate, struck a chord within him. Is such severity necessary, Hera? Zeus ventured an attempt to reason with her. Io should not be punished because of my indiscretion. Hera's gaze hardened, her resolve unwavering. It is not just Io who must learn the consequences of such entanglements. It serves as a reminder to all, yourself included, of the sanctity of our vows. Zeus, recognizing the futility of argument, bowed his head slightly. Your will be done, he conceded. With a nod, Hera turned, her cloak swirling around her as she exited the throne room. Her decree had been delivered. Her authority asserted. As the doors closed behind her, Hermes made his timely entrance. The messenger god, swift and silent, approached Zeus. Zeus. Hermes began, his voice carrying a note of regret. I have witnessed Hera's decree. Despite my efforts, I was unable to sway her heart. For that, I apologize. Zeus looked at Hermes, his gaze reflecting a mix of appreciation and burden. Hermes, your efforts were valiant. Hera's resolve is not easily softened. 
but it is not your apology I seek. It is your aid. Hermes, ever attentive, inclined his head slightly. Zeus, with a sigh that seemed to carry the weight of the skies, shared his plight. Lo's fate weighs heavily upon me, Hermes. Hera has transformed her into a cow, and Argus Panoptes, the hundred-eyed giant, watches over her. His vigilance is such that not all his eyes sleep at once. It is a task beyond the reach of many. Yet, I believe your swiftness and cunning could achieve what others cannot. Hermes absorbed Zeus's words, the gravity of the task dawning upon him. To outwit Argus, a being of such unparalleled vigilance, was a challenge that demanded all of his guile and speed. Zeus, Hermes replied, his voice resolute. You ask much, yet the injustice dealt to Io cannot stand. If my speed and wit can serve to undo this wrong, then you shall have my aid. I will undertake this task and see Io freed from her bonds. Zeus's face, for the first time since the ordeal began, showed a glimmer of hope. Thank you, Hermes. Your courage and loyalty shine as beacons in these troubled times. With a nod of understanding, Hermes turned to leave. His mind already racing with plans and possibilities. Hermes understood that mere speed, though a formidable asset, would not suffice for the task at hand. The cunning messenger god knew that subtlety and strategy would also be required. Determined to craft a plan that would ensure his success, Hermes pondered his approach. To face Argus directly would be foolish, he mused, his mind weaving through possibilities. A disguise, then, to blend into the mortal realm unnoticed. The idea took hold, and Hermes set about gathering what he needed to transform himself into the very picture of a simple farmer. He collected worn clothing that spoke of days spent toiling in the fields, and a beard that would obscure his divine features. He could not replace his shoes, however. The Talaria, as they were called, granted him unmatched speed. Even with his disguise perfected, Hermes acknowledged a critical challenge. The need to lull as many of Argus's eyes into slumber as possible. A lullaby, he thought, would be the key to softening the giant's vigilance. There was, however, one notable obstacle. Hermes was not a singer. His voice, though persuasive in speech, lacked the melodic quality to soothe 
and enchant through song. In search of a solution, Hermes turned to the muses, the goddesses of art and creativity. Upon hearing Hermes's plight, they proposed an alternative to his vocal dilemma. An instrument to play the lullaby on his behalf. Delighted by this suggestion, Hermes ventured into a sacred grove. There, by the bank of a gently flowing river, he found his materials waiting. A cluster of reeds, each one a promise of melody. With careful hands, Hermes created his instrument, a pan pipe. Each reed was cut to a different length to produce a range of soothing tones. The first breath Hermes blew into the pan pipe was a moment of creation, a birth of music so enchanting that the very leaves of the grove seemed to lean closer. The melody that flowed was both simple and complex, a lullaby that carried the power to soothe even the most restless. With the pan pipe ready and his disguise in place, Hermes felt a surge of confidence. The elements of his plan, each carefully considered and crafted, had come together. He was no longer just the messenger god. He was a strategist, an artist, and a liberator in the making. As the moon climbed high into the night sky, casting its silver glow over Olympus and the world below, Hermes prepared to set out on his mission. The path before him was fraught with danger and uncertainty. But the thought of low ensnared and awaiting salvation, fueled his resolve. With the pan pipe at his lips and the guise of a farmer cloaking his divine nature, Hermes was ready to face Argus Panoptes. The night was a canvas of stars, each one a silent witness to the deeds of gods and mortals alike. His first steps were light, barely disturbing the dew that had settled upon the grass. The terrain of Greece lay stretched before him, a tapestry of beauty and myth. Hermes, with the speed that had earned him renown, traversed the land with ease. Yet, despite the urgency of his mission, he could not help but be moved by the landscapes that unfolded around him. Olive groves bathed in moonlight whispered ancient secrets, while distant mountains, their peaks touching the sky, stood as guardians of the world below. As he moved, the terrain shifted from the lush valleys adorned with wildflowers, their fragrance a melody of the night 
to rugged hills that spoke of endurance and time. The gentle babble of streams accompanied his passage, a reminder of the ever-flowing nature of life and the sea, its vastness a mirror to the heavens. Yet, it was not just the natural beauty of Greece that captured Hermes' attention. The remnants of human endeavor, temples and ruins, stood as monuments to the aspirations and devotions of mortals. In the quiet of the night, these places felt sacred, imbued with prayers and dreams long past, but never forgotten. Hermes's journey was a solitary one, yet he was never alone. The spirits of the land, the nymphs and the dryads watched over him their presence a gentle reminder of the interconnectedness of all things. As dawn began to paint the sky with the first light of morning, Hermes neared his destination. The journey had taken him across the breadth of Greece, from shadowed groves to moonlit shores. Yet, as the silhouette of Argus's watchful domain came into view, Hermes paused. The challenge that awaited him was formidable. A test of wit, skill, and heart. The domain of Argus Panoptes was a place of formidable solitude. Nestled in a valley where the shadows seemed to whisper secrets of ancient watchfulness. In the midst of this stark landscape, a field of cattle grazed peacefully. As Hermes approached, he heard the snores of the giant. As loud as they were, he could not see the beast anywhere. Taking care not to reveal his divine nature, Hermes melded into the shadows, donning his farmer's disguise with care. The worn fabric of his clothes and the rough beard he wore as part of his guise made him indistinguishable from any mortal who might wander these paths. With his Talaria hidden, Hermes ventured closer to the field of cattle. Amidst the herd, his eyes searched for low. The nymph now trapped in bovine form. At first glance, the cattle seemed indistinct from one another. But then, like a beacon, one cow caught his attention. Even in this form, Io's grace was unmistakable. Her eyes, though changed, still sparkled with the essence of her nymph beauty. Hermes approached her cautiously, whispering, Io, it is I, Hermes. I've come to rescue you. He wasn't sure if she could understand him, but the gentle nudge of her head against his hand suggested a recognition beyond mere animal instinct. 
buoyed by this small sign of understanding, Hermes began to lead Io away, marveling at the simplicity of their escape. Perhaps luck is on our side, he thought, allowing himself a moment of relief. But then, the ground beneath his feet shifted, and what he had taken for a great hill stirred. Moss and earth cascaded from the form as it rose, revealing not a part of the landscape, but the slumbering giant himself. Argus Penoptes so large that he had been mistaken for a hill. His clothes, a patchwork of earth and foliage, stood before Hermes. Giant's awakening was a slow rumble, a shifting of mass and muscle. Argus's hundred eyes snapped open, catching Hermes in the act of leading Io away. The eyes, bright and unblinking, focused with an intensity that turned the air cold. Argus rose to his full, towering height, a behemoth whose very presence seemed to dominate the landscape. The scale of him was immense, each movement causing the ground to tremble. His eyes, scattered across his body, ensured that no angle was left unseen, no shadow unchecked. Hermes, standing before this colossus, felt a surge of fear. The ease of their initial escape now seemed a naive fantasy. Facing Argus, with Io by his side, and only his wits and the panpipe as his allies, Hermes knew he had to act fast. His hand reached for the panpipe, the instrument that carried their only hope of escape. Brought the pan pipe to his lips, but his mouth was dry with fear. He blew into the instrument, but no sound was made. But Hermes, known for his quick wit and resolve, drew upon his inner strength. Shaking off the paralysis of fear, he filled his lungs with the cool morning air and blew into the panpipe with all the focus he could muster. The melody that emerged was hauntingly beautiful. Argos, his advance momentarily halted, listened. The giant, for all his formidable presence, was not immune to the enchantment of the music. His eyes began to blink, heavy with a sudden and irresistible drowsiness. One by one, as the melody spiraled around him, his eyes closed, succumbing to the lure of slumber. The moment his final eye shut, Argus's massive form swayed, then fell to the ground with a crash that echoed through the valley. The snoring that followed was deep and sonorous. With Argus asleep, 
Hermes did not pause to relish the victory. He continued to play, the notes of the panpipe guiding Io away from the field. The melody served as both their shield and guide, enveloping them in a protective cloak of sound until they were miles away from danger. Only when the landscape around them had changed, the menacing valley giving way to gentler, familiar terrain, did Hermes allow himself to stop playing. The immediate threat behind them. He looked at Io, now safe under his watchful care. Hermes, feeling a mix of relief and triumph, addressed Io with a gentle assurance. You're going home now, to your forest of nymphs. This ordeal is over. As he led Io into the heart of the forest he called home, her nymph sisters emerged, their faces alight with joy and disbelief at the sight of their lost companion. Without a moment's hesitation, they gathered around Io, their hands weaving through the air in a dance as old as time itself. Before Hermes' eyes, the cow was enveloped in a soft, radiant glow where the cow once stood. Io, in her true nymph form, reappeared, her beauty undiminished by her ordeal. With tears and laughter, the nymphs embraced Io. Hermes, watching from a distance, felt a profound sense of satisfaction at the sight of their happiness. His mission accomplished, he turned and sped back to Olympus, the wind at his heels. Upon his return, Hermes found Zeus awaiting news of the quest, his divine presence filling the space with anticipation. Io is safe and back among her own, Hermes announced, a smile playing on his lips. Zeus, his expression softening into one of relief and gratitude, nodded his thanks. He recognized not just the skill and bravery Hermes had shown, but also the compassion and cunning that had guided his steps. Your deeds today have ensured that peace graces Olympus once more, Zeus declared, his words echoing the sentiment of all who would hear this tale. The story of Hermes's daring rescue and the reunion of Io with her sisters would be told and retold for centuries to come. As the sun dipped below the horizon, painting the skies of Olympus with hues of gold and crimson, a sense of tranquility descended upon the realm of the gods. For a brief moment, the usual tumult of divine affairs gave way to a peaceful interlude, a reminder of the harmony that could be achieved. I hope this story has woven a tapestry of dreams for you, guiding you gently into a night of peaceful, restful sleep. Let the courage and cleverness of Hermes inspire your dreams, leading you through landscapes as serene as the ancient forests of Greece.
Please, join me again tomorrow for another sleep story. Until then, sweet dreams. <laughs>